Hey, you're doing a bit of time travelling again. So this is uh, recorded yesterday. Well, today just now, but it'll be tomorrow. I'll link it up. So I'm back to my first electric guitar. Well, it's not my first electric guitar. My first electric guitar was a Honor Rockwood Stratocaster and the neck was bent on it, which I didn't know at the time because I was like 17 or something like that. And uh, you couldn't play any, no, no frets, none of, the string, none of the notes worked up till about the fifth fret. <coughs> then I got a guitar that was good, but I hated, which was a Yamaha RGX321P, which was basically a sort of Ibanez gem or an Ibanez RG looking thing with the Floyd Rose and the HSH pointy headstock. Totally not. Now, now I get it. Um, actually, no, maybe not that dissimilar to, but um, I've, I've, I've been looking for another one of them actually, so maybe if, you're, if anyone's wanting to trade in for a Buckfaster caster, a, a Yamaha RGX, I quite fancy at some point. But, uh, so on my 18th birthday, nope, must be my 19th birthday because my 18th birthday I bought my Yamaha acoustic. 19th birthday, I saved up and bought myself an Epiphone SG, this is the G400 model. Um, so this is the one with the set neck. It's a uh, S6, so that would be serial number S for Samix, 6 for 96. So if I bought it in 96, I would have been yeah, yeah. So, but it was it was it was brand new when I bought it. Bought it in Victor Morris in town. Um, of a guy I couldn't stand, but I just didn't have the money to pay the extra twenty quid that they wanted in Merchant City for the same model of guitar. Um, yeah, so this has, last time I played this, I did a video for it, so I'll talk about it for longer. Um, back then, that, that was before I moved here, so it must have been a couple of years ago, and it's not been in the case since. Um, old Alexa strings on it. I have had to upgrade the pickups on it, because the ones that come in these guitars are pish. Really, they were awful. Um, so these the, these are, a, they were called Fat Cat, Fat with a P, P-H-A-T, Cat. So they're P-90s in, the sh in, the, in a humbucker shape. Um, pretty much nothing else has been modded on it. It's been looked after. Um, I, I, I really like this guitar. Uh, it was superseded a couple of years later when I learned how to play Olive Work Pigs and bought myself a Gibson one. So these are my, my SG collection. Not including the bases, I've now got two. I've got now got two EBOs, a Gibson one and my stripy one. But the reason I'm doing this video is I acquired this the other day. So this is a vintage, which I would put as a direct in competition with the Episode G400 because they're basically they look almost identical. This this one looks a uh, this is my Epiphone. It's because I'm looking at myself in the mirror. <laughs> in the, no, it's not in the mirror, it's in the, the camera there. So, the Epiphone's darker than this one. Or maybe just the way the light's hitting it. Ah, it's just the way the light's hitting it. If you hold them that way around. Um, they're both very similar in colour. Um, so I was really just going to do a bit of a, a trade-off to see what the difference in them was. I said this felt really heavy in the video I did for this yesterday, and it does. It is heavier than this one. And it's heavier than the Gibson. So, I mean, it's, these things are just, uh, I, I thought it felt, it's just heavier than, because I'm, uh, that was my main guitar for ever, I learned to play on the Epiphone. Um, I just kind of used to, because it looks the same, I was, you know, I think I'm maybe just, I don't know if, if anyone who's never played an SG before would find this heavier than normal. Um, yeah, um, what else is there to check on it? Well, I reckon that this, this one had a, a slightly longer neck. So if I put them on this table, that, see, that's, that, that is interesting. If I line these up together, we're sitting on a stool. You can see that it's almost a whole fret different. So there's the nut on the Epiphone, which comes in just shy of the first fret on the the vintage. And you can look at it, you can also see that it's an inch longer. So if I, if I compare it, yeah. So what, what, what what's happened here is the bridge on the Epiphone is closer to the bottom of the guitar than it is on this. 
So that's that's kind of interesting. How does it compare to the the Gibson? Now isn't now in this the bridges are almost lining up very nearly. So because the Epiphone back in the nineties. Epiphone, although it was owned by Gibson, it wasn't that close. I think now what they've done this year actually is uh, they've made basically the Epiphones and the Gibsons are the same range. You know, they've got the same name, just that you get the Epiphone version or the Gibson version of pretty much the same guitars. Whereas these, back in the day, they were a bit different. So I would actually say that with my Epiphone, this is a closer shape and a closer weight than the Epiphone is. Although it does have a slightly longer scale length, because this is a 24 and 3 quarter inch, and this would be a 25 inch. Um, but I would say that this is a closer copy of this than this is. This feels... This this is really... The Epiphone moved factories a fair bit. So this is the Samick Korea version. Later on, I think they became more like the Gibson. Um, this is a thin guitar, or... I'm not sure whether if it's actually thin or just see if you look at the top here where it's been you know, it's been chamfered on both sides you end up with quite a thin point there which makes the guitar seem thin because that's what you're looking at whereas if you look at this one it doesn't go to a point see that's like a it's that wide at the tip of the pointy bit in fact and in this one it's a finger wide so i think what's happened is that this has got like a chamfer an extra chamfer coming in which just makes it feel thinner. Also I noticed that this chamfer here is much smaller than it is on this one. The vintage, the vintage. This one if I get the angle right you can see it. See that this, this is a much a much wider chamfer going round. In fact it goes right round the edge whereas in this one it's kind of not really starting until you get to there. But I mean you know there the chamfer is what an inch and in this one it's an inch and a half. So it's quite different that way. Again, there's a Gibson, which is like is more like this is well, is it definitely because this this has got a really thin so that's that's only a wee tiny, but there in Gibson it's that size. So the I don't know whether it was copyright reasons or maybe just the people who made this were just making their own guitar that looked roughly like a Gibson. So it's, it's quite interesting. Now this is, I, I haven't done any preparation for this at all. I have tuned this guitar. I've not tuned the Gibson. Um, but it's not really a fair comparison because this one's got P90s in it. So I'll probably play something on it anyway. And then I'll maybe compare the Vantage, the Vintage, keep calling it Vantage. That's a Vantage, that purple one there. So I've got Vantage, Vintage, and it's a Vintage Vantage, and that's a Vintage Vintage. And this is a vintage Epiphone now, because it's more than 20 years old, so it counts as a vintage, and then the SG's, the Gibson's vintage as well, so they're all vintage, apart from that one's twice vintage, and that's a vantage. Um, yes, obviously I've lost myself now. There's not really much else to take, but I noticed that this one has the, the chrome top knobs, like the Gibson, whereas this one has black ones. I'm not sure which one's period correct for whatever model of SG this is, at a 62 that they've copied or something like that. Um, incidentally, if you're if you've got the Gibson from this this era, it's a '90s one with the ebony fingerboard special. You will always see these wee metal bits that say volume and tone missing, and chunks out of the these knobs. The reason for that is, well, because they're brittle, but they're also super glued on. So the only way to get the knobs off this era of Gibson SG special is to crush them with pliers. And then you're just, so they, they're brittle, they turn into powder, and you just buy ones from China for a pound to stick on it, which is what I did. Because I was sick of not having, you can see it from miles away, but it doesn't have the silver top bit. Um, so, Chinese knobs on my Gibson. Not pots, just the actual plastic knobs, because a knob's a knob, doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, so this, this is actually sounding really good. Um, I was looking just now, I'm just talking, fuck it. Um, the new Epiphone range that came out, I was slagging it off because of this. But this is solid wood, you know, it's like you can see this doesn't have the the modern one version that looks a bit like this. It's got a veneer on the top and therefore these chamfers look terrible. 
but there's a Pelham Blue one, a faded pen, Pelham Blue. Uh, SG they do that's got P90s in it. These are um, P90s, but they're humbucker size. There's one that's got, you know, P90 shaped P90s, and I think it might even have a wraparound tailpiece, and it looks really good. Um, my pal's actually maybe coming down from Glen Rothes, I think he's going for to go and look at the guitars and guitar guitar. I might try one out. So it's probably quite good that I'm playing this just now, but um, they are, I think they're 350 quid, and 350 quid's very close to the most I've ever spent on a guitar, and it's like, well, 350 quid is what I paid for that. So I, I just don't imagine it's going to be as good as a, nine, as a, a 90s Gibson, and I, I can only buy guitars for, that's why I, I mean, I'm really probably pissing off a lot of folk off because I'm always bashing Epiphone and Gibson and Fender and Squire because it's an unpopular opinion, but it's just the one I've got. I mean, I like the, the 80s Japanese guitars because they are better guitars, not because of what they look like or who plays or that. They're just better built and they sound better and play better. These, this is very much been held back. I think the way they held this guitar back was by putting atrocious pickups in it so that when you went into the shop to buy oh i want an sg you went into the shop and if this had the same pickups as a gibson one people would just buy this one because it would sound the same so what they did was they put intentionally really shit pickups in this so that people would buy this and then a couple of years later like what i did totally fell for the marketing completely need a gibson one bought a gibson one you know three or four years later or you go in and you try this and you try the Gibson and you just buy the Gibson straight up. So that this has been intentional. These are intentionally downgraded from what they are because the actual guitar itself, well, it's a Samic, is really, really well built. I would almost argue that it's a better built guitar than the Gibson. The Gibson seems a bit flung together. This has got a much, much wider neck on it. Actually, now that I pick it up there compared to this one, this has got a really thin neck. This kind of Samic, I've got a sort of... A funny thing going on. I've had so many Samic guitars. I've um, Hondos. The later on Hondos, like anything after about nineteen eighty three or eighty four, feels they they kind of they worked out how to build guitars like this, and this is what they built. So you can get one that's maybe the shape of a PRS or the shape of an Ibanez or the shape of a Gibson or a shape of a Fender, but the the build quality is still the same sort of guitar. I had one a hologram. BC Rich Bitch copy by Hondo and it was pretty much built the same as this the same I don't know what it is they use maybe it's just the, the finishing they use or it's the same profile necks or whatever I mean they're good quality guitars these are the ones that you know nowadays they're building you know the, the Schecters and the, the Chapmans and all that that are sitting up at a grand that's what these are you know they're this quality um, just as I said this one got let down by having really bad pickups in it the bridge and the tailpiece are it's such a, a small thing that it's not really much that you can get wrong with it provided it hasn't broken i mean fair enough that has rusted up quite badly um it's kind of it's kind of bubbling so it's not that brilliant the tuners on this were really shit or are really shit it's the gibson deluxe type ones the the shawlers shawler looking nope not shawler what's the other company clusson they're like clusson copies but the gibson has Gibson Deluxe Clusson copies and they're shit as well. You can't swap them over if you've ever thinking it. I've, I've thought about it, but um, if you look at, if you're getting to tuners, which I am a lot, but see if you look in the front, you can see there's a, a bolt for bolting them on. So th those, these tuners are bolted to the front of the guitar. Do I actually, I probably do have one actually sitting. In fact, I was looking at them earlier on. There, a tuner like this. So if you look at the front, yeah, let's, let's get this um this bolt so you put it in into the guitar stick it on bolt it down that's a better system than what this has all this is is that, that's just a wee washer that sits and then you just push, push the machine head in and it's only held on with the two screws on the back so this has also got a, these will be smaller holes that are drilled through the headstock that's why i've never bothered arse to, to, to sort over from this type so just just as a, as a wee side note if you're looking at tuners you'll notice that the vintage has the good the good type um i would probably actually argue these chain um 
Korean tuners that I put on this are better than what's on the Gibson or on this. But the reason, again, just talking, the reason um, they use these type of tuners is because they're light. And because they're light, SGs balance absolutely perfectly, this one and the Gibson one. Once you put Grovers on it, which modern Epiphones have, neck weight. Although you think there's not going to be that much difference in weight between a set of these and a set of, you know, your typical tuners. Um, remember your fulcrum from physics at school. So you've got like a meter or whatever that is of a lever pulling down. You know, it's not, it's not like having it here. You don't have the weight here. You've got the weight here on the end of a lever. So that's why SGs are often, or the more modern ones are often very badly balanced. Um, I did, uh, if you look back at my videos a couple of years ago, my pal Jerry's got a Epiphone SG, a white one, that I put push-pull coil splits or something in. And um, it had a maple fretboard, which was very interesting for an SG. But it had Grover tuners on it, and it was just constant. That. When I went into the, the back, there was a wee a wee bag full of ball bearings, which is, that was his plan to try and counter-balance it. I bet he'd put ball bearings in a wee sort of purse inside the cavity on the back to try and balance it out whereas the answer to it is you put on lightweight tuners um, yeah. you've also got the sort of vintage correct looking sort of green snotty plastic headstock things whereas actually the ones that came off this guitar um, were this shape in fact was that, that was the one I had in my hand a minute ago wasn't it? no it wasn't oh, what did, there we are so that's I had four of them so that's the original, so it's like it's like a metal version of that. I, I believe that's called a tulip shaped headstock, but I was doing my nuttings, so I couldn't accept that. Um I was gonna leave it, then you're sitting there going, ah, maybe I'll get a bit more money for it if it's Yeah, so 17 minutes I've not played a not played a note. Great stuff. <laughs> guitars. I think my snobbery is coming in a wee bit now and not want to play an Epiphone SG because every, not, not, not so much snobbery, just because everyone's got one of these. You know, it's like, so there's so many of these kicking about, it's ridiculous. I mean, if you look on eBay, there'll be 20 or 30 of them. Maybe not the, you know, the, the, the desirable Samic one from the early 90s, but... And does anyone recognise that tune? I asked him about in the studio the other night in Crankenhouse. I was, I was, I said he was going to try and do something that was really, really simple and didn't involve any real working out. We could just play it. And that was the
Yeah, yeah. So if I switch over quickly onto the, as I said, it's not really a, a fair comparison there because that's got upgraded pickups in it. This and our P90s. This is heavier. It's also got a wider neck. Um, it's a much more substantial feeling guitar. So this is the first time I've played this since about two hours ago when I was playing it in the video. So. This is humbuckers instead of P90. There's not a hell of a lot of difference between the two sound is there? These pickups are really good though. Yeah, so the main difference I'm noticing between the two, the Epiphone and this, is um, the, the neck profile, really, more than anything else. It kind of looks the same when you're playing it. It feels very similar. It, it's got a wider fretboard. But, I mean, I've noticed with these things before, um, it's not going to be an inch wider. You know, because, I mean, you know, the, I, I, this is, my, this is my, always my reference point. A P bass has got a really wide nut on it, a nice big fat nut that's great, and a jazz bass, it's a wee skinny thing that's you know really thinning for poofs. And actually, see when you buy the when you measure the two, one's forty mil and one's forty two mil, so it's two mil difference between big chunky and really thin. So it's like you know you're talking about a millimeter maximum difference between pretty much any necks unless you're getting something really crazy, you know, like that eight string thing I was playing the other day. That's, that's ridiculous. It's like it's, it's it's about two inches wider than ours. Basically, it's having two guitar necks stuck to each other. Um, I suppose just while I'm here, I'll. I did I did look out. Actually, the only reason I looked out my Gibson SG is because this is the one that came out first. I thought I'd found my epiphone and it wasn't, it was this one. So the chances of this being in tune are nothing. But I'm going to just play it anyway and see what happens. You know, maybe see when you buy uh, volume controls from China for a pound for four. Uh, that's actually just broken. At some point, but it's been in its case. Yeah, that's not, that's not particularly impressive, is it? How did you... Need to buy another set. Maybe it might be worth it. Turned out it wasn't tuned. Yeah. These have. Yeah. So I'll be on eBay as soon as I come off this. I'll have a look in my my box. See if I can find another volume control. That's really annoying the way that fell off. Yeah. I can't really live with it having a volume control. That's broken in the case as well. I don't I don't know. Yep. Yeah. That's pure un unbearably annoying that. Yeah so this neck feels more like the vantage than the epiphone. Definitely again balance not a problem. Um that was really Oh, but I don't think it's really. I don't think it's sounding that entirely different either. These are not um, normal pickups you get in this in the, uh, the Gibsons of this era, though. They're um, what do you call them? Like very high output sort of metal pickups, as opposed to being like you know the, what an original SG would have had. I would expect that the the vintage one has more like what a uh, a 60s, what it's a copy of. I ah, see, I want that, that's got the it's got a bit of a neck dive issue as well. It's not bad. I mean, I've obviously I've played ones where you, it just immediately plum, plummets to the floor. It's just a bit. I'm here. Yeah, that might be to do with the fact it's got heavyweight tuners on it though, and the fact it's maybe a slightly longer scale length. Well, it is, it's a quarter of an inch longer scale length, it just moves everything 
that wee bit further out, I'd have thought the, unbelievable, the, the, the heaviness of the body would help cancel it out. I wouldn't argue that this was a, a neck heavy guitar though, it's just slightly neck heavy. Um, makes a noise when you plug it in. Yeah, so I've talked for 25 minutes, played very little and not actually done a proper comparison between the two. So the pros and cons of these, bearing in mind that I am um, uh, biased towards this because this was the first, my first real guitar, so I learned everything I could play on this. I was, I, this has never played Oasis or U2. Really like that. This guitar from you has only ever played Sabbath and good music, um, and it does have 40, 50 quid I paid for these pickups second hand, something like that. Um, so if you put, take that into account, this one does have inlays, fret inlays. They're not particularly fancy, they, they look kind of, well, they're a wee bit shiny, but they're a bit more like a sort of just a transparent plastic as opposed to being any sort of mother of pearl. Um, the tuners are shit, basically, and this um, this is a you know as I said I keep saying it's a, a ninety six Samic one, so this doesn't necessarily apply. Neither do the dimensions I was talking about don't apply to the later on Chinese made or even the later on on Yusung plant. The U serial number ones don't, doesn't apply to this. That's a different guitar. Um, yeah. So the neck actually, I would have said, looks like it goes in further in this one as well. Looks like the neck seems to stick up to here, whereas in this one it's really, the heel isn't a different, the heel's much further down. You still get obviously ridiculous high access, but very similar guitars, and uh, this is a much more accurate copy of a Gibson, even though I'm comparing it to a 90s Gibson, not a, not a 60s original one, I'm not really, I don't really know, and they've got really weird necks on them. Um, yeah, where, where was I? All right, so let's say these are both the same price. These are both 150 quid, right, second hand. Which one would you buy? The Epiphone has got the, the crappy looking headstock. Uh, the Epiphone headstock is ugly, but Epiphone does have a brand thing about it because it's oh it's been, this one even actually says gibson on the trust rod cover because he did it in this area so this is actually a real gibson sort of this has a much nicer headstock shape much more like a gibson and it's cherry red and vintage are a very well-known brand as well but they're not as well known as epiphone because everybody wants an epiphone les paul everybody wants a an Ep, you know an epiphone for their, your first serious guitar which sort of makes sense um the G400, which is this one, the set neck, is significantly better than the 310 one. Although it's the 310 one still, alright, it's got a bolt on neck and that kind of moves the neck down a bit and makes it all a wee bit not really like an SG very much. It looks exactly the same as one, it just doesn't feel the same. Um, but then again, so who's to say what's right? I, I was right, right, went right off vintage SGs because I nearly bought one about three years ago. It was a white. You know the white one with the three the three humbuckers in it. It was one of them, and basically I just picked it up, played two notes, and went, "No, nah, I don't like this at all," and just put it back and bought another guitar. Um, I wasn't buying it new; it was just some guy that was selling them on Gumtree. But um, I seem to I've got I've got to go over it this time. I didn't really seem to notice it. Um, it is heavier. I mean, it's just not it's not that much heavier, but it's a bit heavier. Um, yeah. Uh, so as I was saying, this, this is got the, the fret inlays. Every other one of these I've seen. The, the vintage ones has those inlays, I think, because this is an older one, that it doesn't. Um, it might have Wilkinson tuners, which uh, Wilkinson parts, if you're buying a more modern one, which I would say if they're both the same price, this is a better buy. It's a better guitar. But this is, is a Gibson. This is not. But these are very well regarded. Um, if you look up any views online, actually I saw a guy in Thoman who was trying to Obviously, he's, he's wanting to sell you the two thousand pound Gibson rather than the two hundred pound vintage. But he was even he, he couldn't really fault it. He said something about having to sort the frets and all these things. I mean, I'm I'm forever sorting frets and you know adjusting things and making it work. This one I didn't have to. The frets were all right, or are all right even. I, I, yeah, I polished them because they were a bit dirty. But that was really it. So all I really did to this guitar was clean it and put a bridge and a tailpiece on it and 
swapped over the tuners. Interestingly, actually, I was saying that I've never seen another one of these without the dots on it. There's one on eBay just now. Um, I think it's about 100, 175. The guy's asking it's pickup only though, and it's got the dots on it. And he claims it's got Wilkinson tuner uh, pickups, which it might have. I don't know. I should have probably took them out and had a look and see if it said so in the back. Don't know, but I, I noticed his has got the. You know, I said that some the two the, the two tuners, the, two, the the D and the G tuners, and this were replacements. So the four the, the, the other ones were the originals, and I swapped them all out. Um, his one has original tuners down one side, and then ones that look like these down the other. And he's not even mentioned it in the advert, which is the sort of thing that I I have to I would have to mention something like that. You know, even if it it doesn't make any difference to the performance of this guitar, you can't see it from there. And if you're really looking, you can notice there that it's got an extra, the, the wee screw that holds it on the back has moved around a little bit. And it's just impossible to get an angle there so you can see it. Uh, there, see that there's a wee, the wee, the wee, bit, the wee, the wee screw that stops it spinning. It's kind of all, all coming off the corner of these two, but in the top two, it's coming off the bottom. I would have to mention that. Um, yeah, so my God, half an hour up top for this one. Um, I don't know. I really don't know what my, what my um, conclusions is. I'm not a huge fan of modern, or basically modern guitars. Um, Epiphones, Squires, Fenders—they're just too expensive. Um, I, I have so it's like my unpopular views. I try, I'll talk about that in the guitar channel. I don't want to talk about my views in religion. I don't want to talk about my views on politics particularly much but I mean religion can all just piss off and politics are against I'm, I'm afraid I'm Scottish so there's only one option for me yeah I'm actually feeling quite guilty saying that right I'll, I'll just cancel that rewind and just don't listen to that um so was that helpful don't know basically what I'm saying is yes this the vintage is a good guitar the old Epiphone is a good guitar if you're buying them new, what I would do is go to a guitar shop and try the two of them out and then decide yourself how much it's worth. Bearing in mind that the new Epiphone that looks like this, the G400, has got a dodgy looking veneer and looks terrible. So if you're going for a solid colour, but I mean, everyone wants just, an SG is this colour. I mean, that's why I feel my my Ferrari red one's quite unique. You, you really do not see very many Ferrari red eh? Uh, SGs, they're always this colour or black, um, so that's what everyone wants. You know, this is the, the Angus Young, or the George Harrison, or Tony Iommi, or the Pete Townsend, which I forgot to mention in the last one. But both serviceable guitars, definitely both gigable. Um, the Samic Epiphone, you need to you need to put pickups in it. Um, so if you, if it's got the original pickups in it, I would pay. A bit less for it than I would for this one, which has already got decent pickups in it. You know, I'm, I'm talking about putting, you know, Warmans in it, something like that. I think a pair of Warmans that are, you know, chrome covered are going to be about thirty quid, maybe forty quid for the two of them, and they will be, they will be as good as the Gibson pickups. For, they'll be similar to what, what these are. Or you do what I did and stick P90s in it. I stuck P90s in that one because I already had the by that point I had the Gibson with a humbuckers in it so to justify having two SGs I wanted one of them to sound different um, I do like those um, P90 pickups though I might actually take that guitar out of the studio the, the Epiphone relive it in it's not been in it's not been in the studio for like 20 years I don't know I'll need to make sure we play Paranoid and Highway to Hell and whatever other songs I used to play the last time when I was in the studio 20 odd years ago because that would have been before G-Rock was it? I had the, I'm pretty sure I had the Gibson pretty early on. I, played for a I don't know if you know if it's ever been played in the studio. Rocking, right, anyway, I've talked enough pish. So, um, if you're still here, cheers. Rock on. <laughs>